Hi right, guys, Tony here. Today I've got on Dr. Neil Paulvin, one of the world leading longevity experts, and we're talking all about how calorie restriction is essential for longevity. Stay tuned to the end to find out what difference it's made to my speed of aging. If you're smoking, not sleeping, and you're drinking a lot, all the supplements in the world aren't going to uh, help as much. So, oh, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. I, that, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Well, my numbers aren't going down. Well, are you exercising? No. Do you sleep four hours a day? Yeah. It's, it's just, it's, it's it, you, you got to build a foundation before you start spending hundreds of dollars on the supplements because it's, mm. it's not going to give you the bang for the buck that you want. Yeah. And then the same with the calories, too, is another huge one. If you're just eating too much food in general, you're going to really, it's a real uphill battle trying to take something to try and counteract that. Yeah, it's amazing. Like I'll always, add, when I talk to docs or, or the, the the PhDs about this, the, the clots are like, yes, these supplements are great. Right? Mycin is great. Everything else is great. If you're the one thing we know works the best is still caloric restriction. Mm. As simple as that. If you if you can do caloric restriction and and get your diet controlled, that's the biggest step that you can do. That's the one that has the most data of anything else out there. So, mm. yeah, and that's that's something else. So as I said, I was. Um, incorporating all these things since my last to race test and then and that was another one is the calorie restriction but not um i never feel hungry i know brian johnson he often complains about he feels hungry a lot but of what i'm feeling is you know just uh satiation per calories i'm just trying to find you know the most uh you know well calorie loading basically or volume loading rather so you know trying to find foods that are nutritionally dense but not you know calorie dense and then so i never feel hungry i mean i might crave uh you know chocolate or ice cream or something like that but i'm just very kind of moderate of that and then but still so i never i i don't really like measure my calories but i don't I, I don't ever feel hungry and then yeah also cutting down on um methionine as well i've been doing just trying to cut my meat consumption right down to the quite low i mean obviously everyone's different and responds to things differently but, but myself being a poor methylator that was my kind of strategy is I've got high inflammation markers and things like that. So yeah, just trying to cut down the meat, do all these things synergistically. And then it'll be, yeah, just seeing what, because you know, the, the Dun Dun, yeah, sorry, Dun Dun pace test is really that responds very quickly to all these things. So um, yeah, just be very curious to see the, the results. Yeah, no, I, I mean, the diet is so important. I agree. I mean, everybody's different. I, Everybody's got their own way of stopping the cravings. And, that, and that's kind of the biggest question. I get, one of the bigger questions I get, no matter what. I mean, again, some people, I like have patients do all, a higher protein meals in the morning, not have any real carbs until at least their second meal of the day. Because they find that the higher, like 30 to 50 grams of protein in the meal will satiate them usually. Mm. Um, and then if you're not getting that insulin spike right in the morning, don't have two bowls of cereal of like Cheerios or something in the morning you won't get that if you can limit the insulin spikes going up and down that's also going to control the cravings and then i have patients in the u.s that are now using the glp ones like monjuro or zempic to control the cravings for that alcohol cigarette smoking at low doses and that works really well so again there's you can do medicines you can do how you diet some people find that they fast for the do either tre or intermittent fasting where um that works for them to control their hormone spikes and their hunger you gotta it's, it's, it's it, everybody's gotta find what works for them between the yeah. data and how they feel um like i can't i almost hit a no matter what about 18 hours in 20 hours in i hit a wall i get lightheaded and dizzy and start seeing things i so I, it's i just i'm working harder and harder to get through it I, I can't really progress past like 20 i can do 24 and i have to be really careful i can't work out that day but yeah. everybody's different. I have patients who can go five days and they're like, oh, nah, 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 I'm fine. I did a water fast. I'm great. So it's just, you got to find what works. Yeah, 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 for sure. And that's something I, I'm the same. I struggle going along with time restricted eating. I did. Yeah. Funny enough, I did a 19 hour one just before the true age test. I normally do an average about 14, maybe, maybe 16 in the, the weeks leading up to, to the test. Cause I understand you can get, it gives a little boost to the, um, the pace of aging score. But uh, yeah, that's that definitely works for me. Having a little bit of time restriction in that, I'm someone who eats out of boredom and comfort, especially when I'm relaxed and so like or, or stressed is another thing. So by having that kind of window, then you know, rather than just going back and just eating out of just kind of uh, routine, then you know, well, I've, my window's cut off. I'm not actually hungry if I've eaten a meal. Then you know, you're just going back in the cupboard just because because you feel like it. 
yeah, everybody, I mean, again, you have, uh, like I said, figure out what works for you. Stress eating is probably the toughest thing to overcome. Again, that's why people really like the, the, the GLP ones for that too. If you mm-hmm. can't find that right combo that works for you mm-hmm. and, not, and just find that what works for your stress. But that's again, so individual. Hi right, guys. So we're going to look at my pace of aging. And excuse the red face, this isn't from uh, sunburn. I was doing like a berry acid peel yesterday evening and it's still uh, a little bit flush today. So here's my Danundin pace of aging and it's gone from 0.91 to 0.84. So I'm definitely uh, well below average for my age. The Danundin pace is great for picking up, say, lifestyle changes. In as little as eight weeks, you can see the difference. So far, it's been the most predictive biological age clock for calorie restriction. How it's benefit on longevity. True Diagnostics new omic age clock takes into account a lot of things. So uh, that, that would show a much longer trend. But yeah, I'm happy with that. So that's in relative terms, that's close to 8% drop in my speed of aging. Yes, I could have made more changes and gone down faster, but I'm trying to do this in a stable way. So yeah, calorie restriction has made a big impact to that, especially methionine restriction. So that's like typically from animal proteins mostly, but I still would eat animal protein and just trying to be cut down on it. The other big change in between these tests was taking rapamycin. So that has a similar effect as calorie restriction in terms of suppressing mTOR, your growth pathway. I'm going to be doing more videos on reversing my biological age, but I'll just touch on that omic age clock. And I've had just over a three and a half percent age reduction in terms of comparing me to my peers who are the same age. On top of these improvements, I've also improved my immune system age. So that's shown on the immune system report, but also at my extrinsic epigenetic age, which very much relates to your immune system. And I've had an exactly three year age reversal. So now I've gone from 28.26 to 25.08. So I'm, yeah, I've got the immune system, say, of a 25 year old. And if you look here, a reasonable amount below the peers of my age. And you've got to remember, true diagnostics, the demographic of customers using this are much healthier than your average person. So remember that if you're average on true diagnostic, that means you're actually below average for sure in the general population. Like I said, I'll be doing more content on reversing my biological age, talking about different supplements I'm using, but calorie restriction is the, uh, the most fundamental part of it for sure. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.